Hello everybody and welcome back to the 2023 herping vlog. I'm picking up this episode where I left off last time but in a slightly different manner because our trip was a little bit less than productive. Our first full day in Florida was characterized by really really overcast, cold, and occasionally very rainy weather. Since we knew this was going to be a kind of bad weather day we decided to get a quick breakfast on the beach before heading out. And then we made a trip to Home Depot so I could pick up a gardening tool that I could use to sift through the sand in search of lizards. So the reason we went and bought these is because we're going to be rooting around in the sand underneath this junk, hoping to turn up some lizards. So, I'll show you what I mean. You flip up the stuff and then just give it a little, little scrape and see if anything shows up. Well, here's our first herp of, whoa, of the episode. This is an invasive greenhouse frog. Right there. This is a really prolific invasive species throughout a lot of Florida that's actually native to the Caribbean and a couple of islands like Cuba. And they're a member of the genus Eleutherodactylus. That's, that's as close as I'm going to get to accurately pronouncing that. But yeah, same genus as the chirping frogs that we get in West Texas. Might have to strap the GoPro up for these. These are some big boards. As I'm sure you can tell, we really got screwed over by the weather today. I mean, it's just, it's a rabbit. It's just drizzling and very, very cold. It's only about 54 degrees, so. It's not cold by uh, most people's standards, but by Florida standards, it's pretty useless. So really the only thing that we have a chance of finding snakes doing is flipping trash and there's no shortage of trash out here, as you can see. All right, Caitlin just raked up our next find. If I can uncover this little beauty. This right here is a Peninsula Mole Skink. I have shown these on the channel before, but it has been a couple of years. It's cold out here today, so this guy is a little bit more relaxed than they normally are. But really, really beautiful little lizards. You can see they have that characteristic pink tail. Sometimes the ones in this area have a kind of blue and pink tail. Yeah, these guys are really, really neat. Definitely one of the things I was hoping to see out here today, but they are fairly common in this area. Really, anytime you get into this sandhill habitat. But beautiful little skinks. As you can see, this little dude is quite small, about the size of a ground skink. They do get a little bit bigger than that. This little guy has finally calmed down. I'll put a picture in so you guys can see him in a little bit better detail. But uh, he looks pretty good in this light. And like I said, these guys have pretty variable tails in this area. Sometimes they'll be a little pinkish, and sometimes they'll be blue. And sometimes they'll be purple, pink, blue, all at the same time. So, let's go. Come on. Come on. Let go. Let go and go under the board. Let go and go under the board. Or run back out here in the open, I guess. There you go. Alright guys, well the, uh... The fact of the matter is I think it's just a little bit too cold and wet today. Uh, we spent a lot of the day traveling today and then we got out here and it just rained on us for the majority of the time we've been here. I'm hoping that the rain will let up quite a bit tomorrow and we'll have a little bit of a better chance of finding some snakes. And let up the rain did. We had a relatively beautiful day hiking in some longleaf pine uplands. We even found a beautiful little stretch of habitat that had been freshly burned so we had great visibility. But despite that, I think the only herp we really got a good look at was this little eastern fence lizard who was basking on a log. But as the day progressed, conditions deteriorated and it just got super windy. I mean, look at how fast the clouds were moving by. So we didn't really have any more luck with herps and really all we saw was this limpkin at the end of the day. So we once again decided to cut our losses and met some friends in town for dinner and called it a day. And that brings us to the last day of the trip, where we actually did have quite a bit of success, so I will pick up with my narration here. I really wanted to come out here and dip net for some salamanders, but as you can see, the water level is just super, super low. Florida is in such a bad drought still. I know we just got out of a drought in Georgia, and it's still really recovering, but Florida has it much worse. So I'm not super confident that we'll be able to turn up any salamanders here, but hopefully we'll be able to find something of interest to end this trip on. I'm probably going to have to finish this video in Georgia unless we just absolutely clean up today. So we're going to get to it and see what we can find. Well, under one of the first things I flipped at our first stop today, we have the first snake that we've actually gotten to look at in the last three days that we've been in Florida. 
It has been brutal out here, but this is a beautiful little peninsular eastern ribbon snake intergrade. I'm assuming they're intergrades here, but they might just be peninsulas. Either way, pretty good looking little snake. The last couple of days have been absolutely brutal, and weirdly enough, today is actually the coldest day of the trip so far. It's only getting up to like 59 degrees today, and sure enough, here we have the first snake we've seen in three whole days of herping. Granted, there has been a lot of rain. Conditions have not been the best because of the rain, but there's still no real reason that we've gone three full days in Florida without seeing a single snake. Actually, I saw one banded water snake that jumped in the water before I could get video of it. But other than that, this is the first snake we've seen in three whole days of Herping Florida. Really, really ridiculous. But, I mean, that's a beautiful little ribbon snake, and it's a new species for the year. This is a species that we can really only find in deep south Georgia and Florida. We don't get these guys up where we live in central and north Georgia. So, pretty cool find. I'm just going to pull him out real quick so I can put his rock back. I'm guessing he is pretty cold. It's been so warm the last few days, but today it's just not warm at all. Really handsome little snake. Nice color. So that was Ribbon Snake Rock, and then that next rock over had this guy. This is the same type of ring neck we get back home, but they do look a little bit different down here. But really, I'm just happy to be seeing some snakes after the last couple of days. Hopefully there will be more to come. We've still got quite a bit more habitat to check. I've really only flipped these first couple of rocks right here. All right, Mr. Ring Neck, I will let you go too. That is an absolutely gigantic anole. Look at that guy. Oh, it's like 59 degrees right now, and there is a basking banded water snake right there. Let's see if we can nab this guy. Y'all ever seen outside ribs? <laughs> this guy has a pretty gnarly wound. And it's healing up pretty well, I think, and he seems to be relatively healthy other than that, maybe a little bit thin, but... It's really ridiculous how tough snakes are. As long as this guy's digestive tract isn't impeded, and I don't think it is based on the amount of musk he just made. I could be wrong about that, but it seems like he's doing okay considering that really, really gnarly wound. Like I said, it's just impressive how tough snakes are. Really nice looking belly too. He's about to go into shed, so he's not as vibrant as he would be normally, but I'm just happy to be finding snakes. All right, dude, I'll let you return to your basking. Very nice. There you go. Look at all these anoles. We got one here, one here, one here. <laughs> so many of them out. A cup anole. What's up everybody? We are back in Georgia and uh, it's been I think two days since I last saw you guys in Florida. I mostly spent yesterday editing the video that went up today and overnight we got a ton of rain so I thought about going out but I decided I think I'm going to wait and go out in the morning because it didn't come until really late at night and I'm going out to check out a new park today. This place is really really close to home for me and I, I have high hopes that it could be good for snakes and salamanders and today it's fairly warm actually it's in the low 60s so I wouldn't rule out seeing any snakes today but really I'm really just excited to check this place out because I had no idea it existed until pretty recently so I liked what I saw coming in in terms of habitat so let's get out there and see what we can turn up. Really sounds to me like we are definitely approaching the peak of upland chorus frog calling, which means we should be approaching the peak of spotted salamander breeding too. And this looks like a pretty fantastic spot to see some, so. All right, first find of the day, very, very tiny slimy salamander. Look at that dude. Look at this dude. Just flipped that guy. He's super blue. Like one of the bluest crayfish I've ever seen. Hopefully that's a good sign. I know I've mentioned before that I really like seeing crayfish under logs. All right, this little guy right here is our next salamander of the day. I believe this is a little spotted dusky salamander. And I think this is one of the species that could actually be a county record here. So I'll have to double check when I get home, but that could potentially be a pretty good find. I suddenly have a desire to be on the other side of this creek. There's a huge rock formation through there. Look at that super cool i don't know if i'd find anything over there but it's definitely neat looking and this uh raging flooded creek is the only thing between me and all that cool habitat 
Now this guy, I believe to be the more recently described Desmognathus prolapsus. You can see his snout is a little bit more pointed and his tail is very long and spindly and it's even broken off and you can see how long and spindly it is, but very cool. At least two Desmognathus species here so far. And like I said, this is the recently described Chattooga Dusky, who's being very twitchy. Well, it took a while to find something that wasn't a Desmog, but here we have our first four-toed salamander from this spot under this log he's on top of. Pretty nice looking one. He was completely underwater. This area is just super flooded from all the rain we had last night, but a species we see quite often, but this is another one that could potentially be a county record, so I'm gonna have to go home and double check on that, but either way, nice to see. Something I was hoping to get out here either way. It looks a lot more colorful underwater. It's pretty cool looking. All right, I'm gonna see about crossing on that tree right there and see if we can get over to that rocky stuff. Well, it was very slippery, but we made it. In hindsight, I probably should have put the GoPro on in case I fell in the creek, because that would have been great content. Look at this. Don't you just see stuff like this in the woods sometimes and think, man, I'd crawl up in there and brewmate. Look at that. I just heard a huge tree fall. That was weird. So I hit this little offshoot of the main stream and uh, followed it a little bit. We've got some old moonshining equipment up here, but look at this. That looks like a proper waterfall. I'm gonna go see what's going on up there. This is pretty cool. I'm assuming this is an old ceramic moonshining jar. I found a piece of it in the creek earlier. I didn't know what it was, but really cool. This is pretty crazy. I only know of one waterfall other than this one anywhere near here. That is so cool. This is a pickerel frog way back in a cave. I've been kind of shining around in these cracks just seeing what I can see. There's not really a lot to flip around here, unfortunately. Desmog in there. You can see his tail. So I followed that waterfall all the way to the source, and it appears to be this spring right here, just a hole in the ground with a ton of water coming out. This is fantastic spring salamander habitat. They have to be here. And that stuff we were in earlier today was fantastic mud salamander habitat, but we haven't seen much of anything other than Desmogs. And there is no shortage of Desmogs out here. Those two logs both had multiple under them, so. There's one right there. Pretty one, too. And I'm honestly not sure if these are Conanti or Prolapsus. I would guess that they're probably Conanti, though, just because I think Prolapsus are mostly found in more mucky seepages like that stuff we were in earlier where we did find that thing that I'm pretty sure was Prolapsus. This stuff is really wild. I feel like I'm in the mountains. Super snaky looking too, but I think it's just a little bit cool today. Well, that's a big slimy salamander. Look at him. The only other one we've seen today was very small. How's it going, dude? Well, this place ended up being really cool. Huh. Okay. It sounds like a chainsaw going off, but... Yeah, this place ended up being really cool. Now I just got to find a way back across this creek so I can get in my car. Definitely think that there's a lot of potential here, although I don't really understand why we didn't see more than we did today. It's fantastic salamander weather. It's nice and warm for this time of year, and we had a lot of rain last night, so I was really hoping we'd see more. But it wasn't bad. Saw some really cool habitat and potentially picked up a couple of county records, which for those of you who aren't familiar with what that is, it basically means that this was the first time that these species were documented in this county. All right, well, this is my exit. I'm going to cross this tree back to the other side of the creek where the car is and probably call it a day here. And unless I see something between here and the car, this will probably be the end of this episode. Solid day all around, more of a cool exploration day than actually finding much of anything really crazy. But we did see a couple salamanders at least to wrap up the episode. Georgia has already been more generous in terms of numbers since I got home than Florida was the entire trip. So 
I will take it. I've got a pretty cool video planned for this weekend, assuming everything goes well and we're successful. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss that if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next episode. Thanks for watching.